I was quite surprised. And she was off again before I was ready, but anyway, gear up, climbing away. Looking good. Oh, g'day. I'm Phil from PhilTech. It's about time I explain the engine's cooling system to you. Let's go to the office and talk about that. I thought it'd be a good idea to start with a more familiar engine to discuss cooling systems and then compare it to the Leslie V12. Let's take a look at the essential components that make up the cooling system. We've got the radiator here with the header tank that is mounted on the top of it. We've got the filler cap that's got the inbuilt pressure relief valve. We've got our expansion tank and we've got our cooling fan on the radiator down there. And back here we've got the water pump and of course we've got pipes interconnecting them all. Modern engines have plastic covers over everywhere now and it's really hard to see what's what but somewhere under there is a thermostat and the thermostat is a temperature control valve that controls the rate of flow of coolant water through the engine, depending on the engine's temperature. Now we found that was really difficult to miniaturize on our model engine, so what we use is a variable speed electric motor, and we control that speed with a temperature sensor that's mounted on the outlet pipe from the cylinder heads. Another significant variation from this engine to the model engine is that its header tank is mounted on the top of the radiator. But in the Mustang, the radiator is mounted underneath the aircraft. So we've got to put the header tank up above the engine to make it work properly. This engine will have a mixture of glycol and water in its coolant system. The glycol will increase the temperature of the boiling point while also lowering the freezing point. Now when it comes to comparing to our model engine, it's the boiling point. Increasing that boiling point will be of value for us. So we'll be using a similar mixture in our coolant system. Here we have an, a, a diagrammatic explanation of how the coolant system works for the Leslie V12 engine which is essentially the same as your car engine. Now, uh, let's start with the... Banana's not really the thing to use. That's better. Okay, let's start. Here we've got the water jacket. We've got cold water coming into the water jacket. The water jacket cools down the outside of the cylinder liner. The water goes up into the head, it keeps cooling down the cylinder head, and so we have now hot water exiting the engine, and it goes back to the header tank. The header tank then drains down to the water pump. The water pump goes through to the radiator, which cools the water down, that then goes back to the engine. Now, that all works fine until... The engine reaches a point that the pressure from the heated up water gets to above 12 psi in the system, because this is a pressurized system, and this pressure relief valve will open up, and then it lets water through to the expansion tank, and that keeps the water in there until you switch the engine off and it starts to cool down. And once it cools down, it'll start wanting to suck the water back into the header tank. It has a non-return valve here, so the water can't go back out that way, but it can draw the water out of the expansion tank back through here following the green line and fill up the header tank. So ideally, we shouldn't get a loss of water in this system. Now that we know all about how the cooling system works from watching that uh, amazing diagram on the whiteboard. Let's have a look at the actual parts that make up the engine. So at the top here, we've got the header tank and that's got the exit tube here that runs down into the pump. 
that then pumps the water through into the radiator and it comes out of the radiator through this pipe here that comes in you can't really see it at the back here into the water jacket and that flows through and up into the cylinder heads and then exits the cylinder heads at the front here that flows through back into the header tank so let's have a closer look at the header tank and all its bits and pieces so firstly we've got the filler cap here um, for easy filling now you will notice that on your radiator cap in your car the valve is built into the cap and that was found that a bit tricky to make so we've actually got it as a secondary thing here so that's actually got your little spring-loaded valve there's the plunger with the little rubber seal on it we've got the non-return valve there coming back from our little expansion tank there and obviously the hose is connecting to the expansion tank so there you have it well thanks for watching the video hope you've enjoyed it if you've got any questions please put them in the comments Remember to subscribe and like and have a look at the website if you haven't already. See you next time.